Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Deer Man. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Deer Man Spooktacular. I'm Andrew Hilbert. Thank you for supporting Deer Man. Once again, you can support Deer Man by going to patreon.com slash ahilbert. Just a buck a month gives you early access to the Deer Man story. Thank you so much for supporting this program. This uh, Spooktacular is a live reading of Flesh House, which I read a couple years ago at the Whip-In for my good friend Francois Pointeau. Uh, click on our links, DearManBegins.com is the website. Support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash ahilbert. Happy Halloween, this is Flesh House. It started with the hair. My son Alex first noticed it in the top corner of the living room. Dad, he said, look at this. He put out his hand. A whole clump of curly hair was in his fist. What the hell are you doing pulling out your hair? I asked, but I knew it wasn't his own hair. It was a clump of blonde hair, and no one in my family had blonde hair. Alex sneezed. It's on the walls! Show me, I said. He led me down the, to the corner where the wall and carpet met. Blonde hair like a bush of pubic hair grew on the wall. Go wash your hands! I told Alex that I stared where the growing started. I don't know what I thought. I must have stood there for ten minutes, scratching my head. The hair grew around framed photos of our family. Barbara, Alex, and me sitting on rocking chairs on our front porch. The house was painted yellow on accident, and after a few days of crying, Barbara learned to love its old-timey look. Yellow with white trim, like an egg salad sandwich, I used to say. That would make her cry more. Daddy! Alex yelled from the bathroom. It's on the walls here, too! Look! If this is some kind of prank, it's as funny as it's going to get. Mom will want this all cleaned up before she gets home, you know. My steps were measured as I walked to the bathroom, already thinking about possible explanations for what, was, what I was about to see. It's curly, Alex giggled, and it's red. Sure enough, when I got there, patches of red hair were growing on the walls. I could see them inch out between the white, beneath the white paint. They were getting longer fast. Keep this quiet in front of Mom. Alex... Alex nodded his head and skipped off to his room. I didn't know what else to do but grab shaving cream and a razor and start shaving the walls. I splashed some water on the hair patches and spread the shaving cream. With each stroke of the blade, hair grew back immediately. Little razor bumps accompanied. Shit! Where the hell is Barb's bikini wax? I rummaged through the medicine cabinet and opened the cabinets beneath the sink. I couldn't ever find the fucking Q-tips, and I had no chance with the wax. I had to keep shaving. My hands were unsteady, and I'm rarely in the shaving mood. I nicked the wall, and it began to bleed. I took a tiny square of toilet paper and put it over the cut. The thought that the bleeding signified a much larger problem than hairy walls never hit me. I was in a shaving rage of confusion. The hair grew thicker with each swipe. The razor bumps more irritated, and the tiny cuts continued to bleed. When Barb came home, she found me sitting on the toilet, frustrated. Alex had guided her to me. "'He's been here for three hours,' he said." Hair and blood filled the sink, and the wall hair was as thick as a Pollock's armpits. What the hell is going on? Barb was dumbfounded. Well, I'm not constipated, I said. Your guess is as good as mine when it comes to our house hitting puberty. It must be some kind of mold, Barb said. That ain't mold, I said without looking up at her. Still too frustrated with my own confusion to acknowledge hers. That's human hair. We have to call the police, she said. I don't know that I can even dial a number right now. I've been shaving it for hours. Would you please call them? You've been home all day doing God knows what. I just got home from work. I'm tired. You call them. My face was in my hands. All right, I said. Give me a moment. The moment's passed. Fine, give me the phone. I stuck one hand out without raising my head. By the time the police showed up, the hair had spread from the bathroom and living room to all the walls in the house, including the ceilings. But it wasn't just hair. Human skin coated the walls, and the hair was more pronounced at the corners. There was considerable razor burn, and the bleeding scabbed on the bathroom walls. Doesn't look like a crime has been committed, Officer Montopolis said as he combed his mustache with his middle finger. Any advice, I asked. Dial 311 for non-emergency assistance, he said. If the skin was black, it would have been a home invasion, though, right? I said and showed him the door. Thanks for nothing. 
I plopped myself onto the couch, tired, frustrated, and sniffing the first tints of body odor that emanated from the flesh walls. I couldn't get much rest. Our frame photos were shattered on the ground as the flesh thickened on the walls. Barb smiled at me from one of the photos as she cradled infant Alex to sleep. It was in the same house, the off-white walls not yet adorned with framed family photos, that most of these pictures were taken. This new interior would not be memorialized in frames with happy photos. Jesus fucking Christ, I said under my breath. Alex stared at me. Why did you say Jesus' name like that? He asked. I really don't have time for this, Alex. Do you smell that? I asked. Do you smell that? Alex stared up at me, wide-eyed and on the verge of tears. That is the smell of a thousand unwashed human beings, and it's coming from our walls. Do you understand? This situation is unlivable. Barb stomped in to interrupt my tirade on our innocent son. Do not speak to him like that. This isn't his fault. Alex didn't realize his feelings were hurt until Barb pointed it out. Now he was crying. What do we do about this? I asked Barb over the wailing. You figure it out, she said. I have to cook dinner. How could you have an appetite right now? I've been working all goddamn day. Of course I have an appetite. She put on her apron and banged pots and pans and slapped cabinet doors around. I went back to the bathroom where my troubles began. The house needed deodorant, perfume, cologne. Hell, Listerine would probably work at getting rid of this stench. I picked up Barb's stick of secret deodorant. If it was strong enough for a man but made for a woman, surely it'd be good enough for a house. I surveyed the house for the patches of hair most resembling an armpit and applied the deodorant liberally. The smell didn't go away altogether, but as the walls sweat, the aroma became at least as bearable as Barbara's. In the corner of our bedroom where the wall met the floor was a ragged-looking growth of curly black hair. I applied deodorant, and with each stroke, I felt something protruding and pushing up from beneath the carpet. Oh, shit, I thought and tugged at the carpet's end. Underneath was a hardening penis. Times like these made me wish I was still a Catholic and had a priest on speed dial. Barbara, darling, I called. Do you know of any priests in the area? She answered with a scream so high-pitched and blood-curdling that if the police were still nearby, they'd come and interrogate me for murder. To top it all off, boils and rashes emerged on the parts of the walls where I'd applied deodorant. Patches of red with whitening and pulsing hives dotted the walls. Sweat dripped from the ceiling and onto my head. It was getting musty from all the humidity that the sweat brought in. I felt myself choking on the fumes. A clang from the kitchen. And then a scream. It was Barb. What's going on? I asked before I knew how stupid that sounded. Of course I knew what was going on. Our house interior was made of flesh. She looked at me in silence. A stone face that betrayed no emotion. Growing beside her where the oven lights should be for the stove pop top were two large nipples. They hardened and softened in a syncopated ry- rhythm all their own, synced alternately with each other as they quivered into growth. Barb's chin tried its damnness not to telegraph her inevitable avalanche of tears. She used my shoulder as a napkin, and I rubbed the back of her head to console her. Alex stood in the living room with a pen and paper and mapped the new geography of the walls. He stood before a pulsing and pus-filled sore. Around it, a black and blue bruise deepened. Alex, curious to the point of mental defect, pointed his finger and reached out to poke it. I watched this happen in slow motion as Barb sobbed into my shoulder. Alex's finger burst the sore wide open with a geyser of infection. How's that chana masala now, guys? (laughs) Yellow and green mucus mingled with the red blood and splatter across Alex's five-year-old face. Alex stood there, not knowing how to process this turn of event. He looked at the finger that he stuck into the sore. I could feel the goosebumps on my body bubble up as sweat dripped from my forehead. I knew what came next. He examined his finger for a split second longer, and then he put it into his mouth. (laughs) I love this. No, I yelled and pushed Barb away from me. You fucking asshole, she yelled as I marched toward Alex. He stopped everything and let out a scream of terror, uh, terror of disgust or both. You need to stop tasting things, was all I could muster up to say. If he had fallen into mud, I've probably swept him into my arms and threw him into the bath, but he was covered in blood and infection. Come with me, I yelled and turned back for the bathroom. I kept my hands in my pockets for the fear that he'd try to hold them if I didn't. Take off your clothes and give yourself a bath like a big boy. You don't want to be a baby forever, do you? I want to be a big boy. He smiled and clapped his hands. Little tiny splatters of blood flew off his hands and hit my lips, though I dodged as best I could. 
The hot water knob was fleshy, and I retracted as soon as I had reached for it. It was purple, scabbing. O- it was a purple scabbing over tumor with hair and teeth growing all over it. <laughs> I swallowed. <laughs> I swallowed my own terror, grasped the knob, and turned on the water. Wash yourself! I yelled and handed him a bottle of shampoo. He was dedicated to earning the big boy title and lathered himself up. He looked to me and smiled and waited for my approval, but I looked right past him. The sound of running water hypnotized me, and I was finally allowed some peace, some peace to listen to my thoughts. But there were no thoughts. The sound of water rushed and emptied me. After a few seconds, a pungent and warm smell steamed from the water. I looked down. The water was, a dark ye- was as dark a yellow as hangover piss. I grabbed Alex and threw a towel over him. Do not, I said. Do not lick your lips or open your mouth or anything. Then you'll be a big boy. He nodded his head without saying a word. I went back to the kitchen for Barb, who was now on the floor crying into the tile. What's your brother's phone number? She didn't answer. She reached into her pocket and handed me her phone. After scrolling through her contacts, I found it. Interesting, I said. You still have Jason's number after 10 years. Don't be a fucking asshole, she sobbed. It was just a college fling. I selected her brother's name and called. Sam, I said in the phone. Who the fuck is this? He asked. My phone says Barb, but you ain't Barb. It's Kevin, your brother-in-law. We need you. Kevin, holy shit, man. We never talk. How's Barb? She's crying into the kitchen tile right now. We really need your craftsman's skills. But ain't you the one who said I'd never make it as a carpenter? Now look at here. Who's calling? Sam asked. Yes, yes, I was wrong. Bring lots of tools, please. I don't know, Kevin. I'm just sitting in my lawn chair, drinking a six-pack and enjoying the day. What's good there to lure me in? Twenty dollars and a bottle of whiskey. See you in ten minutes. Five if I use a bike lane. Don't use the bike lane. Sam dropped his tool chest on the floor as soon as he walked in. He was wearing black overalls, a headband, and he twirled his beard in his fingers. Y'all still have that stupid rule about taking your shoes off before you come in? He stomped his mud-kicked boots on the floor. I pointed to the walls around him. It doesn't matter today, I said. Holy shit, i never seen nothing like this before, he said. What should we do, I asked. Sam poked and pinched at the flesh walls. He left bruises in some spots. You try tearing this shit right off, he asked. I don't have the stomach for it. You California types. Always tucking their dicks in their assholes like they scared. He shook his head and giggled a bit. He pulled a knife out of his pocket. My daddy always said a real man carries a knife. Good, good, I said. My, my stomach nodded itself in anticipation. He made a deep cut with his knife parallel to the ceiling. Blood like a waterfall spilled down toward the floor. Well, that's real gross, he says. He grabbed a deep cut he just made. Just a little tug, he said, and tore a strip of flesh right off. The house screamed, and every single pimple, boil, and sore popped at the same time and covered the floors with pus and blood. He tugged again and pulled another strip. The house roared and shook. An artery fell out and sprayed blood all over him. You know what? He said as he wiped some of the blood out of his beard. I think I left my bar tab open last night. I gotta go. You got that 20 in the whiskey? I couldn't get the whiskey. Please take 40. Out of my wallet, I pulled out two 20s and handed them to Sam. He nodded and half smiled and went for the front door. He tried a few times to get the door open, but he couldn't. Son of a bitch, it's stuck. He said, I went to examine the reason and noticed the skin had grown over the hinges and over the cracks of the door. It was completely fleshed over. Sam pulled out his knife and pointed it toward the ceiling. He grinned, telling me again that real men carry knives for just this sort of situation. I know, I know, I said with my eyes, and he took that as his cue to start stabbing at the door skin. With each stab and cut, blood poured out onto the floor, onto his hands, onto our faces as we watched in horror. But try again to open a door, as he did, and there was no luck. The flesh had immediately scabbed over and hardened. A knife is good for many situations, but this was something special. I gotta use the pisser, he said and headed for the bathroom. Barb was on her knees now, looking at the tits on the oven. They were throbbing and purple with little drips of milk escaping one by one from the nipples. We need to milk it, she said to me. We need to relieve its pain. I know its pain. We need to milk it. Barb struggled to get off her knees. The tile was now wrinkled and damp, and my high, sc- and my high school years and wrestling informed me that either the floor or Barb's knees, or both, were going to have ringworm in the morning. <laughs> what are we going to milk it with, I asked. Alex is still young enough. 
he's still young enough. Barb's eyes are crazy. Her makeup was smeared from all the crying. Her eyes were sunken in and swollen, and she was breathing heavy. She grabbed me by the collar. Tell Alex to relieve its pain. Look at them, Kevin. They are swelling with pressure. Calm down, I said to her. Don't we still have a breast pump or something? Let me check the bedroom closet. It's not fair for it to suffer, she said as I walked away. Lactation wasn't all it was suffering from. We had just nearly stabbed it to death. Milk was the least of its worries. I walked into the bedroom and, ah, the penis I had massaged out of the carpet was still there. It had grown from a regular-sized erection to a flaccid whale of a thing that rested atop our bed. It had to be 10 feet wide and 15 feet long. Stray pubes poked out here and there, and it left a puddle of sweat on our sheets. When I walked to the closet, I noticed it perked up and pointed upwards toward the ceiling. It was only natural for me to follow where it pointed with my eyes. It was pointing to a ball sack growing out of the ceiling. I watched it grow from a tiny little thing, no bigger than an average pit bull sack, to the size of an elephant's ears. It swayed as gravity pulled and elongated it until finally found its resting place atop the penis that was on the bed. That's the weirdest anatomy I've ever seen, I said to myself, almost forgetting that I was on a mission for a breast pump. I dug through Barb's walk-in closet. Piles of clothes were strewn around with flesh from the walls growing and melding with them. The flesh's odor was now unbearable, like an old man refuses to shower but once a month, his stubbornness a calculated outward symbol of his vitality, his stench a sign of a dying man. It was like the smell of rotting fruit and uncooked meat left in the trash for days. My stomach was in knots, and I gagged on the humidity of the house. Brown age marks dotted the walls, along with the moles and wrinkles that sagged from the ceiling to the floor. The hair was turning white and falling out. Above me was a chandelier of skin tags that drooped and swayed. I tried... I tried my best to duck my head as I reached for Barb's shelves and threw my hands around blindly looking for something I wouldn't recognize if it hit me in the head. Meanwhile, the skin tag chandelier hit me in the head. No. Fuck! Shit! Son of a bitch! God fucking damn it! I yelled as I ran out of the closet. My knees nearly hitting my chin. The dick was still there resting like a beach whale on my bed while the ball sack straddled it. White clumps of smegma accumulated around the foreskin and began to pile on our bed sheets. They were new bed sheets too. Sam was gagging in the bathroom. His moaning was dampened by the sweating flesh that covered our entire house. I opened the door. His head was in the toilet, which was acne-riddled and pockmarked. I, he said in the toilet, I keep chucking because I can't stop thinking about how fucked up this is, and I'm spewing into a skin toilet. It never ends. (laughs) Good thing you brought your knife, I said to him and closed the door. On her hallway's wall, it stared at me. An eyeball the size of my fist started from side to side, up and down. It was in a panic, had ooze dripping out of, its pu- out of it, and its pupils were clouded over. Once it, figured I st- Once it figured I stood before it motionless, it did nothing but look me in the eye. Honey, I yelled. I couldn't find the breast pump. I think this thing's just going to have to suffer. The eye blinked, and I turned away to head for the kitchen. Barb was sobbing as I watched her put a nipple into her mouth and start to suck. She gagged on whatever came out and burst into more tears. She had been pushed to the edge. The skin hung low from the ceiling and clumps of body cheese fell from the wrinkling flesh. Alex, who's been told plenty of times not to pick at scabs, was peeling off the scabs that had healed over from Sam's stabbing session. He was putting them into piles by color. The younger... (laughs) The younger, redder scabs in one pile and the old brand scabs in another. When the piles were done being sorted, Alex picked up a young scab and put it in his mouth. Sam was vomiting in the bathroom. His wailing muffled and echoed off the corners of the house. Bob sobbed in the kitchen. Over and over again, she said, I work all day. I work hard. And now, this. Puddles of milk she had spit out began to curdle around her. And as Alex chewed on the first scab he put on his mouth, his fingers readied for another. <laughs> 